Stuart Haas Racing has a major sponsorship problem. We all know Stuart Haas Racing has been down bad on the competition side the last two years, basically. But they might be down just as bad on the sponsorship side heading into 2024. Like Fast and the Furious 10 levels of bad. Angela Cope levels of bad. It is really bleak over there right now. Thanks to Reddit user RWStuart93, he put together a list of how many primary sponsorships Stuart Haas Racing lost from 2023 until 2024, and it's not great. Stuart Haas Racing, with the departure of Kevin Harvick and Eric Amarola, has lost 66 primary sponsorships as they head into 2024. Of course, Eric Amarola leaving also includes Smithfield leaving. That's 32 primaries right there, basically half of that 66 number. But of those 66 races, for a four-car team, over 36 points paying races each year, that's 144 primaries that the team has to find in terms of sponsorship. They lost 66 of the 144. That's 46% of their total primaries gone. So Almirola leaves. There goes 32 just with Smithfield alone. He also left and go bowling, left with him. There goes another three. So there's your 35, over half of them right there with Eric Almirola. Bush Beer left at the end of the year. They went to Track House for 2024 with the departure of Kevin Harvick. Gear Wrench left Stuart Haas Racing as well. They're over at Legacy Motor Club now. Ream, gone, not on the sponsorship list. Maybe they could do something, but it seems unlikely. They were a Harvick sponsor, or they mainly sponsored Harvick when they were at Stuart Haas. They're gone. They'll be over at JGR again this year with Christopher Bell. And then you have Hunt Brothers Pizza left as well. They're now at Team Penske. So right there, you have all of these sponsors gone. And they left, leaving a 66 race hole for Stuart Haas Racing to fill in 2024. And they didn't hire any drivers that bring sponsorship with them. So the big question is now, how do they fill those 66 races? Well, right off the bat, you have Josh Berry. And thankfully, they were able to continue the relationship with Sonny D that Kevin Harvick had in 2023. They'll also have that in 2024 with Josh Berry starting the, the Daytona 500, which is great for them. That's awesome. We love to see sponsors, one, stay in the sport, but two, also continue on relationships as well once a driver leaves. That's massive. But they also hired Noah Gragson in the offseason. And Noah, of course, is a bit of a branded driver at this point. He's a he's the black sheep out there. Nobody really wanted to touch him after what he did. Kind of the Kyle Larson thing, except, you know, Kyle Larson definitely got into a much better opportunity than what Noah Gragson's in. But for Noah, he does have sponsorship relationships that he's nurtured over the last couple of years. He, of course, has Wendy's sponsorship, which he had at Beard, and then he had last year at Legacy Motor Club. Will that continue into 2024? Maybe. They still follow each other on social. Not that that means anything, but of course, there's always the opportunity. He also had Black Rifle Coffee as a relationship. We'll see if that comes over to Stuart House Racing as well. And I've seen a number of fans cite Bass Pro Shops as a sponsor that could possibly go to Tony Stewart, Stuart House Racing rather, in 2024. And I just don't really see that for the Cup Series. And they cite the fact that Gragson and Josh Berry both had Bass Pro Shop sponsorship when they were at JRM. So, you know, they could bring it over to Stuart Haas. But right now, Bass Pro Shops already has primaries with Martin Truex Jr. in the 19 car, as well as Austin Dillon in the number three car. Adding a third car in just seems excessive, but Johnny Morris does have a good relationship with Tony Stewart, so it's always a possibility. Crazier things, of course, have happened. But even if they do add in some of those, you're still looking at a 66 race hole. I mean, that is nearly a full season for two cars that they're looking for. So Gene Haas might have to break out his checkbook this year and start writing a lot of sponsorship checks to fund these cars and make sure they're on track, which at the end of the day, it just comes out of the marketing budget at Haas. It makes some sense, but how many Haas cars do we have to see before you know that marketing starts to fatigue for the select people that are out there able to you know purchase Haas CNC? And sure, they're looking at that as a B2B type of thing, they're not promoting that to a general consumer, your average NASCAR fan that's just buying a ticket and going and watching a race in Phoenix or wherever. They're looking at business ex executives, people that are in purchasing departments, people that are out here sourcing bids for machinery and everything like that. That's where Haas comes in at because they're machines. I mean, let's be honest. They're expensive and your average guy is not going to just go buy a Haas CNC to pop in the garage. It just would be cool, but it's just not <laughs> reasonable at the moment. This is a tier one team. This is a team that used to attract major sponsorships. Office Depot, Old Spice, Quicken Loans, US Army. When Danik was there, you had GoDaddy, Aspen Dental, 
Nature's Bakery, you had Mobile One, you had Jimmy John's, you had Outback, you had so many different big time sponsors that were part of Stuart Haas Racing because when you're winning, it's a lot easier to get sponsors to come on board. And Tony Stewart was coming off of being competitive at Joe Gibbs Racing, starting up his own team, and then going in and winning a championship in 2012. That's an easy way to attract sponsorship. New team, fast team, winning races. That's why Kevin Harvick's able to attract sponsors. One, KHI does a great job of man or you know nurturing those relationships. Kevin does a great job. We heard his manager talk on the Dale Jr. download this year about how great Kevin is to all of his sponsors, and that's why they stick with him. These new guys at Stuart Haas Racing are likely going to have to try to do some of that same nurturing process. They're going to have to try to attract these sponsors, and they might not get them before Daytona. This might be a year-long thing into 2025, but that's the only way that Stuart Haas Racing is really going to attract new sponsors at the moment until they turn around that competition side and start winning races again, because winning fixes everything, most of the time, for most people at least, unless you're Furniture Row and... Joe Gibbs Racing puts you out of business because they raise the right. But for the most part, winning fixes everything. So they got a lot to look forward to in 2024. And I think that Stuart Haas Racing's in a good spot, as weird as that sounds. I think they have a young driver core. They have a talented driver core. They just need the cars and the competition side to match what they have on the talent side. And I think they can make some noise. But until they get those cars to a better spot, that's where it comes down to. Tony Stewart was at the Mecham. Uh, auction this weekend down in Florida, and he talked on the broadcast about how he spent more time at the shop this offseason as they try to right that ship. He also wanted to point out to all the fans that he doesn't set up the cars, so he's not the one turning the wrenches. Whether he's there or not, he's still not influencing if they're making the right engineering decisions. But I think having that leadership there and a guy down there wanting to make sure that this team is headed in the right direction is a step in the right direction. So they still have to find 66 races and sponsorship, and hopefully they do that because they're going to need to. One thing about Stuart Haas Racing that they won't do, which we've seen other teams do, but if you're a Tier 1 team, they typically will never do this, that is discount the primary sponsorship price. Because if you work in advertisement, if you work in marketing, you know if you give them that discounted price once, when you go to them again and be like, hey, we have this open, would you be interested? They're going to say, yeah, sure, for that same price that we got it for last time, even though you know that was a substantial discount and you can't do that again. You did that to try to get them in the door. Never a great idea. Unless it's, you know, a make good or something like that where you're like, oh, well, you know, we'll have this or remnant inventory. This That's too inside but you get my point you can't discount it and i don't think stewart haas racing will just to have a sponsor on that car they'd rather run ford performance or haas automation on the side of those cars before they you know hang it up and give it to somebody at a massively discounted price so we can see bob's tire and an auto on the side of it or whoever some random one name sponsor and zloop yeah and get them and then end up in in prison but i think that they'll find their way it's just going to be a long road to hoe, as they say. 66 races, that's a lot. That's a heck of a lot. So hopefully they find sponsorship, right? We already know that Chase Briscoe has great sponsorship relations with his sponsor, Mahindra, and some of the other auxiliary sponsors that they have, but Mahindra's CEO is happy with them. He tweeted last week or two weeks ago that they're sticking with Stuart Hawks Racing because they understand the up and the downs, and they're willing to ride this out with them because they believe that they're winners, which is awesome. Need more sponsors, need more CEOs, like that. And then, you, of course, you have Ryan Priest. He brings sponsorship along as well. That helps offset some of the cost there and, you know, the sponsorship team having to go out and, and find sponsors for his car. It's the Josh Berry, the Noah Gragson. Josh Berry, we've heard that he's bringing Harrison's over from his Xfinity ride that he had at JRM last year. That's not going to be like a 32 race sponsor, but if it's a 6 to 10 race sponsor, cool. That eats up some of that 66 right there off the bat. And I will go ahead and say most of that 66 I'll go ahead and say 36 of those are probably going to be Noah. That's going to be a much harder sell on the sponsorship side. For Josh, we know he's got some sponsors uh, built in there already, kind of continuing over from the four team, and you know maybe Harrison's as he brings that along. But majority of the sponsorship focus is going to be on Noah Gregson. So let me know in the comments, who do you think Josh gets as a sponsor? Who do you think Noah gets as a sponsor? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Card, Instagram and Twitter at Card Blog.